Hello and welcome to the Death Battle cast, fresh out of RTX. Thank you to everybody who uh, joined us in Austin for our uh, Death Battle panel. RTX was a lot of fun. We got to show off some cool stuff. Uh, but we are back here. I'm Ben, the voice of Wiz. I'm joined by uh, not Chad today. Surprise. Um, so we have uh, pretend Chad. Hey, Sam. that's me. I'm pretend Chad. Hey, yeah, Sam. That's about right. <laughs> Yep. Uh, so Sam's here, producer of the show, of course. Other producer of the show as well. We've got Aaron. Hello. I am skipping ahead, Mike. Sorry. <laughs> wow. And uh, naturally, of course, we've got Liam as well. I'm sure you've heard him. Hey, everyone. How are you doing? Wow. I'm looking a little. Okay. I'm looking a little roughly today. My hair is all poofed up. Uh, I'm tired. Not a, like super villain. Uh, <laughs> I right looked there. As we moved I hadn't slept for like six, thirty-six hours before last night. Um, yeah, you just I flew had back, a, right? I just flew back. I flew back at seven thirty in the morning, and then uh, I was able to like wasn't even able to nap that long. Uh, I guess I napped for like half an hour uh, when I got back, and then um, later that night I went to see Mission Impossible, an early access thing for Mich the new Mission Impossible, which fucking mm -hmm. own by the way. Like very quick review. I, because I've only seen, I've seen like each of the Mission Impossibles, but like only once, and I really don't remember a lot about them. I just remember mm -hmm. the experience. Um, I feel and, like that's most people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I like them a lot. I, I just am not yeah. like into them like I am like a Bond fan. Um, even though I think they're better than the most recent Bond movies. Um, uh, I had the most fun uh, watching this one than I have uh in any of the others. I, th I just thought it was a blast. I thought it was so much fun. It was like I think one of the genres of movie that we like. Are not given enough of is actually like good action movies. There's a lot of it is... action movies, but there's not a lot of movies that focus on action, like the literal, the stunt and the spectacle and the creativity of the scenario and all of that. Mm. The athleticism, it's just interesting. It is very interesting that it's coming out around the same time as Indiana Jones. Yeah. Yeah. Which is an action film apparently about a an action hero who can't do action anymore yeah <laughs> which is um, like i don't does anybody really want to see that it, <laughs> i, mean, I, I let these bombing. poor men rest <laughs> like, i was mixed on it i didn't hate dial destiny like some people did i didn't certainly didn't love it um but this mm. mission impossible was way better mission impossible is like the sure. bar to hit right now um as far as yeah, I'm I, I haven't seen dial of destiny yet although i did finally go see spider verse which was amazing yeah, yeah. god I think, uh, that's a yeah, good that's one. Spider -verse. How many more years do y'all think Tom Cruise has? A lot. I, I think the man's age immortal. Well. Do you think yeah. he's just got that Scientology juice? Just exactly. Yeah. He made a he made a pact with Zulu or whatever the fuck <laughs> the <laughs> aliens <laughs> called. So he's so fucking wrong. depleted of Thetans. He goes yeah. back to his house and he steps into like one of those tubes, like in Star Wars. He's just suspended a back to in tank. goop. Yeah. Or, uh, or so with his line in until yeah. he needs to be in another film yeah it just seems whenever insane. he's not filming he's in cryo yeah <laughs> like, i mean like, how makes me old so is mad. tom cruise he's like i, I think he's like 50s, 60. Right? i think he 60s? might be no I think he might be 60 now or very close to it 76 um, so yeah we're pushing are you shut okay, up 60 61 61 yeah 61. <laughs> wow okay i was like 76 no fucking way i i yeah. still I get 61 so mad is wild because like as much as it is, as as fun as it is to like dunk on him and how weird he is, like he's great. He's a great stunt person. He's a very charismatic like character. His movies are great. His mm -hmm. Ethan Hunt does not come off as like weird or cringy at all. It's not the movie balances like self importance and camp like very very well. I'm like god damn it. It's fucking I mean, perfect. he's one of the only people out in, in Hollywood still you know uh, pushing for all the practical stunts and whatnot. So. Yeah. It um, pays off. He goes off a fucking yeah, mountain. He's a fucking crazy person, and somehow that translates yeah. to good movie. <laughs> and I like he's, knowing he's about good at his job, and you know I can respect that. Yeah, yeah. you're crazy. Uh, thank you, Team Dark for Smash, for gifting a membership. Um, <laughs> you have to be crazy to do that. <laughs> Barely. Would, All right. Uh, oh, but also speaking of crazy, we have uh, some. We, we have a very wild matchup Aww. to talk about today with uh, between two. Worlds. I don't know why. No. <laughs> oh, actually, I do One know why. Because um, yeah. Rocket versus Girl. Stitch recently came out. We were like, what's a similar type of animal that we can uh -huh. do a death metal cast with? 
and squirrels came up and that's where we are <laughs> yeah so by the way if you haven't seen rock versus dish go check it out it's really fun uh so we are going to be doing death battle cast with marvel's infamous squirrel superhero squirrel girl mm -hmm. and spongebob's <laughs> squirrely friend sandy cheeks yep and I'm referencing Why? Cheeks. Well, they're both squirrel themed. One is a squirrel, one is a girl who controls. Uh -huh. well, just, she doesn't control squirrels. Um, she can communicate with them. Well, the other them. squirrel is also a girl. It yes, yes, a squirrel. And then girl, the girl, a girl is also squirrel, kind of a squirrel. The the capital the, the, the proper yes. noun is a little different. Yeah, squirrel girl, girl squirrel. There yeah. is also a girl squirrel yeah. in squirrel girl. <laughs> It's getting so complicated really already. There's, All a right, lot of, so. there's a lot of squirrels going on. Oh. Aaron is going to be repping Squirrel Girl. Liam is going to be mm -hmm. repping Sandy Cheeks. Um, and as always, we are going to be uh, uh, running through the characters. They're going to uh, uh, basically try to convince all of us who should win in a fight by any, any means necessary. And at the end of the show, we will vote on who should win. I will get a vote. Sam will get a vote. And all of you as well. So stay tuned for that. We also have a little sneak peek later on. Uh, regarding our upcoming episode of Darth Vader versus Obito Uchiha. So stay tuned for that. I'm very excited to share that. If you were at our Death Battle panel, you might have already seen a little bit of that. So um, people seem pretty excited about that. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Uh, and we'll talk about uh, more about that later on in the show too. All right, so let's begin with opening statements. And we can go ahead and start with does anybody want to start? I don't even know how to start this. <laughs> I, I can start. Aaron, you can start. I don't care. I can start. Liam, you, you can start. You can go. All right. Start. Liam, go ahead. Sandy Cheeks. 60 seconds on the Sandy clock. Sandy Cheeks is SpongeBob's, one of SpongeBob's closest friends. She is a squirrel that has decided to uh, live underwater in the Pacific Ocean to conduct tests and study marine life and build inventions. Um, she is a super genius. She is a karate master. She is from Texas, so I better be getting the fucking Texas vote from you guys out there right now. Um, she's also a fucking monster. Very much established to be the <laughs> smartest character in Bikini Bottom. Very much established to be the strongest and toughest character in Bikini Bottom. She always kicks SpongeBob and Patrick's ass. Like, she dances on their fucking graves. And that's not even when she's in hibernation mode, which is where she turns into a fucking hell beast um she has the tune force she has the crazy sci-fi gadgetry she has the stats uh she is more than enough to beat the one joke one note squirrel girl as impressive as doreen is she's fucking going down perfect timing all right what why is she living underwater <laughs> um so there was an episode that like uh confirmed it was one of the later seasons which i don't care about anymore um <laughs> it was it was when she she goes she's going there down there to like um build inventions and i think like study marine life or something like that it, it's something like that she's she's been contracted to build inventions and for some reason she's underwater to do it uh but she's she was employed by monkeys by chimpanzees um that are like uh yeah it's it's the writing and the, it's just, does. the point it's like i don't get what the joke is right oh they're you chimpanzees want... it's funny i don't who cares are they um, supposed to be like sea monkeys? Is that a they're, thing? No, they're no, they're they're from they're from land. They come down to visit her at one point to like check on her progress, and she's built a lot of like nut themed inventions at the time. And they're like, we don't like nut themed inventions. And then she accidentally builds like a banana themed invention, and they're like, this shit owns, and they give her more money to, to fund her. <laughs> that all makes crew. sense. That's why you got to know yeah. your audience. Yeah. Exactly. See, precisely. Got to know who's funding this, your projects. One for him, one for me. You know. <laughs> See, this is why SpongeBob is regarded as just a comedy classic. Clearly, that that's the most incredible joke I've it was, ever heard. I mean, in the in it's the really first season, she, she just came down to the ocean, and it was just funny because she was a squirrel in a fucking diving suit, and that was it. They didn't lean too much into the invention thing. They didn't really lean into it at all. She was just really smart. It was fine. They didn't need to. <laughs> they didn't need to fucking big it up. It's yeah, whatever. Uh, Alcorn Pictures, you. We will get to the Captain Britain versus Uncle Sam thing in a little bit, but yes, oh, yeah. you're right. We yeah. are going to vote on that. Um, but just wanted to get into this first. Uh, okay, so um, in fact, we're going to probably wrap 
up the episode on that. <laughs> so we'll have two votes at the end. For a second, um, I thought you were just like, we're done now, actually. <laughs> we're yeah, at the episode yeah, right now. <laughs> I could not. Liam's found uh, well, a new way to ensure victory. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, the, the video's titled Sandy versus Squirrel Girl or wh whatever. So we'll get through that first and then we'll get to the, mm -hmm. the Uncle Sam, uh, Captain Britain thing. So we kind of do, got to do a quick recap on that as well. All right. So uh, let's talk about Squirrel Girl. What's she bringing to this? All right. So Squirrel Girl also known as Doreen Allen Green, uh, is a superhero computer science major and even a previous member of the Avengers. Doreen was born with a genetic anomaly that allows her several squirrel-like abilities, although she's not technically an X-Man. Uh, she is able to communicate with squirrels, no other animals, just squirrels. Uh, she has a large prehensile squirrel-like tail, and she also has all of the abilities of a squirrel, speed, strength, agility, but scaled up to human size, which gives her pretty significant powers as well as pretty strong durability. Uh, she is able, through her communication with squirrels, to, to command really large armies of squirrels, and she even has trusty squirrel sidekicks throughout the comics currently, one named Tippy Toe. Uh, her entire gimmick is that she is the unbeatable squirrel girl. She has never been beaten except by herself as a clone. We'll get into it. Uh, but she has defeated uh, Deadpool, Craven, Terax, Fin Fang Foom, Modok, Doctor Doom, Ego, and even Thanos. So I'm not sure what a squirrel under the sea is supposed to do about that. So glad. That's also <laughs> a record from the wiki. I'm so You're, glad. Uh... Your uh, your cat really wants to. Be yeah, on. I heard that. That's all I he heard does. That. I I I have to say, like, things whenever... to say about squirrel fights. Whenever people he has lots call, of opinions like... about squirrels. It's true. <laughs> oh yeah, he wants to rip them apart. Yeah, I, I, when you were when you were doing the the, the sixty seconds and you were talking about the proportionate strength, speed, and durability of a squirrel, I was like, all right, get to the, get to the that part's the joke. Yeah, get to the real shit. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, like Doreen's thing is that like on paper she's like the worst super she was created to be a joke right the joke is that mm -hmm. she defeats characters and it's not that she de it's not just that she defeats them she defeats them without a clear explanation of how yes. like it'll always be a cutaway gag or or it's it'll be off panel or something or we'll return to the scene and then it's like she's they're they're defeated um which i think lends to itself a couple of very key weaknesses in regards to Sandy that I'll, I'll start to talk about. Um, first of all, I want to talk about Sa like, okay, so where, where do I begin? Okay. Um, where not do all of those are legit. Begin? How not would Sandy even fight? That's where we begin. Also so, incoming dog, we got dogs and cats. Sandy can fight um, because she is a physical fight. Like she would fight with punches and kicks and lassos and her inventions. Um, she is much stronger than SpongeBob. Um, of course, as we know from our episode, um, SpongeBob versus Aquaman, SpongeBob is strong enough to carry the entire universe um, on his shoulder, right? When he unravels it, one of the things we didn't really talk about, uh, or I forget if we did or not, but we didn't, it was a speed, we we're focusing on it as a speed feed. Um, but when he unraveled the universe, he was still carrying like all of the string of the universe, like on his shoulder, uh, unraveled. So he was able to, to carry the weight of the universe. Of course, that feat that, that we feels talked like about a when stretch, he unraveled it. But okay. Uh. Uh, and in, oh, okay. uh, I, I mean, he, when he was unraveling the universe, was because he did he change his size or did the universe change his si its size? He didn't change his he, size at all. That, how does that even work? That <laughs> like it was it was very. I mean, it's a team. How do we right? like, logically take that and say like, oh yeah, he unraveled the universe and then carried it on his shoulder, even though how do you he logically take he it? unraveled the universe? He did, he wasn't larger than it. He, he he it was pulling out of the background. So he was still he didn't he didn't change his size he just floated up into space as he was unraveling all of it and then and then carried it all like here it would just it would just have been super dense i mean that's another okay. great feat. how fucking dense was that shit the universe is like a thing like this actually it would have been this small because he's tiny also of course it's the speed feat right we talked about that 10 to the 70th power times the speed of light i also want to bring something up that we didn't actually find in our um in in the original episode until after it was written uh, Mike, could you bring up image eleven? This shit's this shit's insane. Um, and this is uh, more shout than out to enough... Kage for the ten uh, memberships, by the way. Thank, Thank you, Kage. Nice. Also, I met Kage at RTX, and it was lovely. It was yeah, we all did. Yeah. Um, this is a feat that would easily put 
Sandy uh, scaling the SpongeBob along with any of the people that um, uh, Squirrel Girl has fought that uh, that you mentioned. Uh, SpongeBob flips a Krabby Patty um, so many times. It flips in the air so many times. It moves so fast that it disappears from that plane of reality. So with his strength and speed, he flips a Krabby Patty so that it rotates essentially immeasurably fast, so fast that it disappears. It, it exits reality. Patty has disappeared from this plane of reality, disqualified. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, like a, it, it somehow went from 39 them. flips to 117 flips in an instant. Okay. Yeah, because it was getting faster. So and fa hang on, Aaron, Aaron, can you run through that that uh, um, the list of characters that that Squirrel Girls fought before uh, and and beaten? Mm -hmm. One more time. Yeah. You, uh, well. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You, you we'll can see <laughs> you can see Liam has got his like I've placed I play my trap yeah. card face on, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So she's she's defeated several characters, both in violent and nonviolent means. Uh, the course, the big ones being Modok, Doctor Doom, Ego, and Thanos, as well as nonviolently defeating Galactus. Doctor Doom, Thanos, and Galactus those are pretty good. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. I, I mean. What? Galactus could do shit like that, no problem, right? It was nonviolent. Galactus is physically. an explicitly nonviolent defeat. A lot of these he other ones involve what, is non oh, wait, wait, not, what does yeah. nonviolent mean in this context? So Galactus, uh, she, she, so, so in the current comic run, the unbeatable Squirrel Girl, the primary kind of like running gag and kind of theme of of her comic is her solving things nonviolently, solving things through through compassion and talking to villains to understand, you know, why are you doing this? What's really the problem you're trying to work on? And then kind of helping them find a new outlet or other thing to focus on. Uh, like specifically with Ego, the living planet, he was going to come and consume Earth. And she convinces him instead of consuming Earth to go consume a different planet a distance away that has no living like life on it. So that is classed as her defeating ego, even though it is not something that involved, you know, a feat of strength, like strength or speed or what have you. She's able to therapy hard enough that she convinces supervillains to yes. not be supervillains. Yes. That's the, that's the idea of the series is that, you know, the joke with Squirrel Girl before that is that she's unbeatable because of just, it's a joke. Now she's mm -hmm. unbeatable because she, you know, doesn't fight them. She 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 she, she, them. she has the the power of top no jutsu. Got exactly, yeah, precisely. <laughs> uh, Kendrax, thanks for the the five memberships, mm -hmm. uh, gifted. That's amazing. It sounds like, uh, and this is a little early, but I have to do it. <laughs> it sounds like Squirrel Girl would be um, would 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 find a great job at BetterHelp, our <laughs> sponsor for this there week's episode. <laughs> so let me run through our sponsor real quick. Um, like I said, this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Sometimes in life, we're faced with tough choices, and the path forward isn't always easy or obvious. Even if you're not in a chal challenging situation right now, I'm sure you know life always has challenges in store in the future. Whether you're dealing with decisions around your career, relationships, or anything else, therapy can help you stay connected to what you really want while you navigate life, so you can move toward forward confident and excited about what comes next. And that's where BetterHelp comes in. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist. I don't know if Squirrel Girl's a licensed therapist, but uh, maybe she should become one. Uh, who can take you on that journey of self-discovery from wherever you are. Even if you haven't experienced traumas that would absolutely benefit from therapy, there's still a lot to gain here. With a good therapist, you can learn positive coping skills, how to set boundaries, and just be the best version of yourself. So let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash pass today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash cast. Thank you, BetterHelp. All right. Um, so let's get back to talking about squirrels. Yeah, she is a computer science major, not a, not a psychology or sociology okay. major. So, so she's not a licensed therapist, but she is very good at it. <laughs> so maybe she wouldn't be able to get a job at BetterHelp, but, uh, you know, with some experience, maybe. So Squirrel Girl yeah. is explicitly stronger than Squirrel. Like, she has all the powers of squirrels. Yes. But she has the proportionate up. strength, speed, what are the and durability powers of, of a squirrel. Squirrels? Well... I would like to argue that 
if she's stronger than the strongest squirrel and sandy cheeks is are stable for strongest squirrel she's not stronger than the strongest squirrel she has the proportionate strength speed and durability of a squirrel like spider proportionate strength speed and durability of sandy cheeks a squirrel no. The proportionate strength, speed, oh. and durability of an I see where you're And going to be with fair, this. <laughs> it, it explains it as she has these proportional, you know, strength, speed, durability, agility of a squirrel. And also, Sandy is from a different but, universe. Nice try, though. Well, all right, but uh, oh. <laughs> the the way that she exhibits these abilities of hers do reasonably go on what would be proportionate to a squirrel. She's able to take yeah. hits that a squirrel scaled up to human size would not be able to do. Yeah, uh, like she. Yeah, it's, it's the same thing with Spider Man. You, they exactly. describe him as proportionally strong to yeah. a spider, but there's no way that holds up. He's so much stronger than that. She, uh, in in one uh, conflict that she's in, uh, trying to help out Loki with a problem, she ends up getting slapped by Dormammu, and stands right back up afterwards. And she's just like, "I kind of hurt," but then she's totally fine. Uh, Dormammu. Okay. Yes. Okay, that's pretty big. <laughs> Not yeah, as uh, uh, impressive, but I think it's funny. Uh, Mike, if you can pull up Squirrel Train. Squirrel Train. In one of the comics, uh, there is a you know classic superhero problem, right? There's a speeding train coming down, but the track is ruined. What is she going to do? So she just lays <laughs> down and makes herself the track for the train <laughs> to go over. So thousands yeah. of tons of steel going at uh, like 100 miles per hour rolls over her and all she has to say about it is ow 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 and then right up, right after superman the train rolls by she just move. stands back up and she's fine yeah that is a classic superman move and i love that they're giving it to squirrel girl yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's great uh somebody in Anyways. chat uh missed it i missed who was said that she has like a oh there it is travis uh coeg Squirrel Girl has her own Hulk Buster in a video or in a Lego game. Yes, she she does at certain points in the comics also, you know, and these are getting into more of what I would say is like her arsenal, which, you know, haven't really gotten into. But in various points of the comics and in the Lego game and in some other canon, she does get additional suits. So she gets that kind of equivalent of the Hulk Buster. Um, she gets a, a Lego flying... Hulk Buster. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. For to clarify. And she gets uh, <laughs> at one point she steals and and commands an Iron Man suit. Uh, and the I think the biggest thing is that in a uh, squirrel unbe unbelievable squirrel girl beats up the Marvel Universe, which has been my main thing I've been reading <laughs> through. Uh, she becomes and Mike, if you can pull it up, Squirrel Thor. Squar. Squar. Squirrel Thor. Um over over the course of the conflict that happens in this particular comic run she ends up being teleported to the moon on which she survives for about 20 seconds she does not get crushed by the vacuum of space so also put that down for her durability thank you um and her squirrel sidekick ends up teleporting to her to save her uh Mjolnir. and she is worthy she picks it up and it transforms her into squirrel thor for the remainder of the battle that she is in Wait, is is this is what's the squirrel Tippy Toe? Is that his name? Tippy Toe, yes. Tippy Toe can teleport. Uh, Tippy Toe gets a hold of a teleportation device that was made by Doreen's evil clone named Alim, uh, and it is a small teleporter chip that teleports things. Uh, it gets hard coded at that point in the story to teleport things to the moon, because she uses it to teleport Doreen to the moon to defeat her because. She knows herself because this is this is her clone that she's fighting at the time. Um, so she's like, okay, in order to defeat myself, what I have to do is send her to the moon where she will eventually suffocate to death. Not be crushed by the vacuum of space, but eventually suffocate to death because she still needs to breathe. But then okay. Tippy Toe, her, her squirrel sidekick, steals the teleporter from, from her evil clone, Aline, and uses it to teleport Mjolnir to the moon. So the only way to defeat Squirrel Girl is to send her to the moon so she suffocates to death. In in my research, it's like the closest to death that she's gotten. But even then, so she again, can suffocate. she was on the moon. Uh, she wasn't crushed by the vacuum of space. It was just that she was eventually going to run out of right. breath. Also, that art style is giving me like She-Ra vibes, which is neat. Yeah, it's a cute art show. style. Yeah, oh, We don't need to like emphasize not being crushed on the moon. Like the train feat is better than that. It's not a very, like it's like a little superhuman. Uh, it's um, not yeah. like 
close well, to thanks, what Sandy <laughs> <laughs> said. It's just things. like, yeah, Sandy would turn her to paste if that was her best durability. Yeah. But she'd like she also fucking... can get beat around by Dormammu and stand up and be fine. So we can also throw out the train beat at that point. She, I just thought it was funny. Yeah. <laughs> she does have a set of Iron Man armor, too. Yes. Which she, I don't know what, how helpful What you said that's was that be. she commandeered it. Yes. Yeah. She stole I, it. I mean, yeah. like, stuff like, yeah, stuff like stealing Iron Man armor or getting or or getting Mjolnir for a fight is not like I think what we would consider a standard arsenal. Um but regardless, let's talk about well, some of those. Well, she is Squirrel Thor for the rest of the series, right? She she gives Mjolnir back to Thor because she's nice. So she's only temporarily Squirrel Thor, but it is it does still make a point of she is able to catch and wield Mjolnir. Technically, if you are worthy of Mjolnir, you can call on at any point, right? Yes. No, worthiness. That's my understanding of it. Worthiness is granted. Uh, so you can you can lose worthiness. Uh, it can be granted to you like impermanently by Odin. It's not like a, a consistent one hundred percent thing. Otherwise, tons of characters would just be like, and then get no there at any point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, they also don't want to steal it from Thor. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to talk about Sandy Thieves. Let's talk about Sandy Thieves. Um. Oh, actually, no, I'm not. Uh, you mentioned so the big ones were Galactus, which was nonviolent. Um, uh, Doctor Doom, Ego, Doctor Doom, which is also and, nonviolent, and then Thanos. Yeah, yeah. Thanos is the let's big go, one. Let's go. So Thanos is the big one. Image two, Mike. It's also the one that was retconned. Um, but was it? It was. But was it? Here, let's look at the panel. Um, so this is this is a little bit after that that comic came out, written by the same writer um, as the original fight. Um, the original and the original fight, it's Uatu, the Watcher, who's a cosmic being, saying, "I have scanned his DNA, and I can confirm that this is the real Thanos." Thanos is talking about the Thanos eye that he's created uh, at the same ex at the same like the same time period as that original fight. I'm going to imbue them with my own psychic imprint. When I'm done, his brain shall mirror my own down to the last ganglion, neuron, and synap synapse. Uh, gifted telepaths, the most cosmic of beings, even the clone himself will believe him to be me. Um, and those those Thanos eye. They're very strong. Um, they fought like She-Hulk, but they're clearly a, like a lot, lot weaker than the actual Thanos. Like She-Hulk level is much, much, much weaker than Thanos. Um, so I'm pretty sure like Jim Starlin held whoever the writer was at fucking gunpoint and said, "No, I'm, <laughs> Thanos is not being fought." Squirrel Girl. Wait, but does it uh, actually specify that the one that Squirrel Girl fought is one of these clones? When it says the most cosmic of beings, it's referencing Uatu, the cosmic being. Are you yeah, sure? Mike, if you want to pull yes. up uh, Squirrel Girl defeats Thanos, the, the third image I said to Because here. it kind of comes across to me as Thanos being very embarrassed and making an excuse. Yeah. Uh, he is not. So this yeah, is... This, is, this is the panel. Liam's also the, referring to it. This is the panel in which she has off-panel defeated Thanos. So you see him defeated in the, for, in yes. the foreground. So it's Uatu, the Watcher, is saying, Yes, Squirrel Girl, with my cosmic senses, I can confirm that this is, in fact, the one true Thanos and not a robot clone or simulacrum. What Liam is talking about is in a subsequent comic, comic run in which this was essentially retconned it is just kind of a funny thing if you just look at the narrative of the comics of it's going it's basically a little fight back and forth of like she defeated thanos no she didn't yes she did no she didn't of you know it, it calls yeah. into question of like oh but you know I, I, all the thanoses that have been defeated in the comics are all actually clones so actually thanos is really still stronger and then this guy is just like all right well i'm gonna have squirrel girl defeat thanos and then have a watcher there to literally say Ah, yes, I can confirm this is the real Thanos that you've defeated, poking fun at that other kind of retcon of, oh, yeah. well, other Thanoses were clones. So then the subsequent one is talking about how, well, actually, Thanos yeah. can make a clone so perfect that it can fool even the Watcher. And, you know, to that point, one has to wonder if it's a clone that's so perfect to Thanos, would it not be of a similar strength level to Thanos? But then, as Liam pointed out, She-Hulk is able to defeat said clone. This is like but, a publicly yeah, but the Hulks thing. are in measure like incredibly powerful anyway. But the real so, thing too is isn't. that it it ultimately just calls the concrete legitimacy of that feat into question, but it doesn't fully debunk it just because Thanos has since established that he can make a clone that can fool a watcher. There's no concrete thing where in the next panel he then says, "So that one time I was defeated by Squirrel Girl wasn't actually me." So there. Yeah, that's what I was wondering about. <laughs> I, uh, I think would need, you would need to if... you would need to scroll up. Thank you. A different comic <laughs> panel that specifically says 
Ah, uh, yes. And the one time I was defeated by Squirrel Girl wasn't actually it me. Sounds to me like it's just an excuse for people who don't like Squirrel Girl to say, ha, see, uh, she didn't actually beat Thanos. But what about Dr. Doom? Bur like, Dr. Approved. Doom's incredibly powerful, too, and she beat him. Burden, burden of proof would rely on you to prove that that Thanos was in fact the actual Thanos and not a clone. Um, but let's, but let is it, Dr. Doom. He, Dr. It literally Doom. says in the panel that it's the real Thanos. And in the next, and in that other panel, it's retconned. But so it's not specifically prove, referencing, it's not specifically retconning that one moment, so it, burden of proof is on you to prove that it, it is specifically referencing that moment. This is a publicly acknowledged moment by the writers talking about it. Okay, okay. I, I, I don't know how to like move past, I don't like, yeah, no, 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 it was retconned. Um, you find me a panel was, that specifically says I, I, actually I, I, it was my clone that was defeated by I think Squirrel it's Girl, better. and then we can talk. Yeah. I think it's better if it wasn't retcon, but it, it super was. How um, okay, so this aside though, too. how does how does Sandy Cheeks do with like Yeah, we haven't even gotten to talk about Sandy and mental I have, like, attacks. Have about Sandy talk. plenty. <laughs> no, we ha no, I haven't. Well you talk about um, SpongeBob. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thank you. With uh, Sandy, mental attacks. No, yeah, like Squirrel Girl doesn't do mental attacks. She just can communicate with them, and they listen to her. She can um, control. So Sandy yeah. just go, it is. Squirrel. It is no. something, and this is technically not in my favor, but I care about accuracy of the character, so I'm going to say it anyway. I was seeing a lot of comments, both in in the poll and in the live chat, of people saying, "Oh well, you know, Doreen can control squirrels, so doesn't that end the argument?" She doesn't actually have like full mind control over squirrels. She communicates with them and they are squirrels like as a species are very loyal to her. So she is able to command very large armies of squirrels. The largest like concrete number of squirrels that she commands at a time that I found is 62,000. But there's no evidence to, to show. 62,000? That is the highest concrete number that I found. But the real thing is, there's no evidence in the comics to prove whether or not she couldn't just, I don't know, command literally all of the squirrels on Earth. Uh, How many squirrels are so, there on Earth? Again, the no <laughs> evidence would be like, it. she never did that. Regardless, there is a, a yeah, I mean, we could get we can get into armies of squirrels 200 uh, yeah. 300 million squirrels there you go <laughs> so yeah um she doesn't have to worry about mental attacks because doreen doesn't but control squirrels still, she just communicates with them so you're mm -hmm. saying sandy wouldn't to some extent listen to her no why 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 would any in, of these in, squirrels in the same, dive a, into death, death scenarios? Where, it, it's a I death do battle. think there is... We remove character okay, limitations real, real quick, that prevent you from killing yes. your opponent. I, I do think there is a question here because of Squirrel Girl's talk no jutsu, but we can get to that in a little bit. I do want to know more about like what Sandy specifically is bringing to the fight. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, so, uh, obviously, Sandy is incredibly strong. Um, uh i talked about stat stuff i mean she routinely beats the shit out of spongebob i just wanted to bring up image uh nine because i thought it was funny you mentioned a prehensile tail not like it like is a big deal but sandy's tail is also prehensile it's also uh, incredibly buff <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it has it's a like, hand too which is it, it, extra yeah, that's weird that's concerning oh <laughs> uh, she knows karate um, she's a super genius. She's the smartest person in uh, Bikini Bottom, even smarter than Plankton. Uh, they're both like super geniuses that create inventions, but Sandy is smarter because Plankton is like very impetuous and a dickhead. Um, she has a lasso, um, which you can use to tie people up um, and then do this to them. I, I just like this. This is just funny. Uh, image, images four, five, and six. This is the one sequence I kept talking about why it was inflating my, my image number count. Um, when, when SpongeBob and Patrick got mad at her, um, for making fun of Texas, she started chasing them, and then uh, uh, lassoed Patrick, uh, and then image five, pulled him back as he's like screaming, uh, and then image six, and then nuked him. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but Patrick's fine after this, and also uh, he's beat up. This is small underwater. It Patrick could just be survived a die capsule the... with some force that... behind it, like. Sam, stop with the They're the size of sponges under the water. You, I don't Sam, think you Patrick, can have an Patrick's... actual mushroom cloud explosion underwater. Actually, yes, you can. That's a joke that's brought up bunches of times where they're like, how do we have fire underwater? And Sandy invented an underwater campfire that stays burning underwater. Um, also, Patrick survived the universe exploding on top of it and was fine. So, But did Sandy... So. Um, Sandy is much uh, stronger and tougher than Patrick. Yeah, but, but what happened did to Sandy? She, did she survive the universe unraveling? That was, 
she did not survive the universe unraveling. So Neither like, did SpongeBob, oh, though. Okay. Neither did SpongeBob, though. Well, he was unraveling. Yeah, and what are we then. even talking about? Only Patrick. <laughs> Um, he pa SpongeBob survived because he, we could hear him laughing afterward. Um, but his body didn't survive being unraveled. It wasn't uh, a universe. It wasn't like a universe destroying feet, like the universe blew up. It was unraveling the fabric of the universe. Mm -hmm. So that would be like, yeah, okay, she like she is a part of the fabric of the universe in the sense that I'm a part of the fabric. Everyone is. Um, anyways, let's continue. Um, Rapidly moving she, on. <laughs> no, Liam, what do you, we what need do you to get to the specifics of unraveling the universe. However, what do you, that might what do you want to talk no, about that I've been quickly yeah. from? Um, um, sure. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Sure. Okay. Um, she, has, she has regeneration. Um, she was able to, and I mean, you're, we talked about like, could she survive? Did she survive in the unraveling string? We don't know that, but she had her head literally deleted. Uh, she has a gun called the Disappearator uh, 2000. This is image 13. Um, and Spongebob, yeah, 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 don't worry, there's a, there's an ash cloud to make it clear that it's not invisibility. She actually did erase her brain, uh, or her head, um, and, uh, it completely vaporized her head, uh, removed it, and she could actually still speak and make sounds and walk around and control her body even without it, which is just like Spongebob when he was unraveled by the string. It's just instead mm. of it doing it to her entire body, it just did it to her head. Um, and it's not necessary to, sh I described it, but it's image 13. Um, uh, she's also omniscient. Uh, there is an episode where she, uh, yeah, there you go. Um, there's an episode where she narrated the entire episode. Uh, she knew everything that was happening. Um, she spoke to the fourth wall. She appeared like in the foreground of the world and was talking to the audience. Um, and uh, so she knows she, she, she is a fourth wall breaking character enough that she knows like what the events of the episode are happening before it happens, like kind of like a Bugs Bunny thing. Um, that's probably pretty useful. Uh, so real quick, Dublay X in the chat says the regeneration is inconsistent. She lost her tail once and it didn't grow back. So uh, yeah, is it just something was... to do with the gun? Uh, no. Um, when the way that she regenerated it is that um, uh, SpongeBob pulled a little like button on her on her suit, a little knob thing. He, he did that, and then her and then her head like reinflated from top to back. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's, it's like... not her; it's her suit. I mean, she can just do that. <laughs> it does sound like it's part of her, her suit allows her to regenerate her to body. To regenerate her head, and her that's tail entirely is sticking possible. out of the suit, so. All right, well, it's, it's a good thing that uh, Doreen and her a squirrel compatriots squirrel have a history thing. of <laughs> disabling suits that give people significant powers, such as Medoc. Um, and Dr. Doom, um, mm -hmm. which we can get to. Uh, so in terms of inventions uh, that Sandy has, well, it would prevent her from regrowing it, but I mean, we're, it, it, if you, we can argue that it could prevent, pre prevent her from regrowing it, but she still survived without a head. Like she was still like. Well, that's why I'm wondering if it was part of the and, gun, and like the gun removed the phys, like I don't know, the physical object, but rem like. The idea of the gun is spiritually that it, it just, is still there. I don't know. <laughs> it just vaporizes things. Um, okay. So it, yeah. Um, All right, we'll has... get to Doctor Doom in just a little bit. I do think now might be a good time to take a little break. Okay. Um, because we've been squirreling it up for quite a bit. Uh and there's something else that we want to show, right? Mm -hmm. Um I think everybody everybody wants Yay. to see this. Let's go ahead and get to our little sneak peek for Darth Vader versus Oboto Uchiha. Let's check it out. I sense your fear, your anger. Power, I will be taking it. That power will save this cursed world. You'll have to pry it from my cold, dead hands. Then you will die. What? All too easy. I expected more. <laughs> I won't disappoint.
Nice. Hell yeah. Uh, uh, yes. If, if you were at RTX, you you might have noticed that we showed a little bit more there. Uh, so, uh, well, thank you to you guys for coming out to support us there. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's um, it's looking pretty cool. <laughs> I really I really like what uh, uh what's what's going on with this fight so far. Um, this an this animation's headed up by Devil Artemis. Um, in fact, he was very excited to make this episode. It is it is one of the episodes this year that he really wanted to do. So that's why we're doing it. But also, we've had this one on the docket for a while. We knew we would do it eventually. Uh, and then Dave, um, Dave Fisher, who has worked on Death Battle quite a bit, is responsible for some of our like craziest fights. If you recall, uh, uh, <laughs> Goro versus Machamp, he was yeah. uh, instrumental to that. Um, is uh, helping out as well. So they did a phenomenal job, and we got Jason Marnoka as Vader again, returning, and uh, Nicholas Andrew Louie, who is a longtime Death Battle veteran, is Obito. Uh, very excited to have them back for it. All right, so that will be airing uh, this upcoming weekend, this upcoming Sunday for uh, first members and Planet or Galaxy members on uh, the YouTube channel, and then on Monday, 17th, for everyone else on YouTube and Rooster Teeth. Go ahead and check that out. Okay. Squirrel Girl versus Dr. Doom. Ah. What's the deal with that fight? Because I've seen that panel. <laughs> yeah. It has just like squirrels attacking him, and he seems to be completely helpless against squirrels. Here, I just posted that. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so. The thing with, I mean, the, 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 it wasn't like a, oh, you know, he was like, that was a clone of, that was a, a Doombot. It wasn't a Doombot as far as I know. Um, but the thing with Dr. Doom is that Dr. Doom isn't always at the state that he is when he fights. Um, there are multiple times, there are tons of times when Dr. Doom is in his base where he doesn't have all of the functions of his suit activated. He isn't like currently generating magic um, where he can be essentially treated like a normal person um deadpool famously assassinates uh, dr doom by just taking him by surprise when he's not expecting to be fought uh, squirrel girl breaks into his base and immediately swarms him with, with squirrels without him having a lot of time to prepare for an attack or do anything like that now obviously like the joke is that she beat fucking dr doom with squirrels but he doesn't fight her they just swarm him and that's the end of he doesn't like shoot magic at them and then they're like immune to it he doesn't like like uh match punches with squirrel girl and she's like he's like equally as strong as him they just swarm him and and he can't really uh deal with it um it's you could say you could say that it's really impressive but you can't say like specific things about the fight and that's kind of the big thing with squirrel girl is that it's hard to point out specific aspects of her that make her better than sandy just i don't know this does this call into question something that sam was talking about <laughs> which is if what? the squirrels of the marvel universe can take down dr doom are they really uh, can we apply real world squirrel physics to them or are all the squirrels of the marvel universe super the like, super creatures well yeah either that or the squirrels will listen to squirrel girl to a point of just like absolute suicide missions there, he was he was like attacking one of, other, one of right? them in that in that panel, yeah. right? He was like slapping one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, I mean, there there is a point within that. So yeah, she can't like fully mind control squirrels, but uh, in one of her initial comic run appearances, in which she is a little bit more violent uh, before she had her reboot, she commands an army of squirrels to uh, help her defeat Maelstrom, and canonically, every single squirrel of that army dies and dies for her cause except for one uh named monkey joe who becomes like her first squirrel companion so commands an army they all die in this conflict for her and the one that survives instead of being like hey fuck you lady he's like no i will be your lifetime companion until i die for you later at the hands of a different villain <laughs> so she does command a lot of loyalty and respect i will i will say like it's it's not like infallible loyalty when she is fighting her clone uh Aline. There is kind of this conflict of Aline has a squirrel army, Doreen has a squirrel army, like who's gonna come out on top? Which, you know, that's still Aline is her perfect clone and everything, but she just has slightly different morality. She wasn't cloned with the ability to compromise, which is why she kind of goes, you know, down the path of becoming the villain that Doreen then has to defeat. Okay, wait. So she could command squirrels as well. 
Yes. Evil clone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, are there, so are there in... evil squirrels in the Marvel universe. <laughs> she duplicates squirrels so that they have her same lack of morality. So she. <laughs> Synopsis, so there are evil squirrels. <laughs> synopsis of of this graphic novel, Unbeatable Squirrel Girl Beats Up the Marvel Universe. Uh, Tony Stark gets a duplication machine uh, from I forget which villain it is, uh, but they defeat a villain, and from him get a like duplication machine that makes almost perfect clones. She accidentally gets shoved into the machine and makes an almost perfect clone of of Squirrel Girl. And she doesn't have that ability to compromise. So she doesn't have that, like, you know, therapy, Takanojutsu thing. So she ends up getting to this point where she's basically like, oh, humans are terrible. So I think I'm going to do human genocide and have squirrels take over the world <laughs> and have squirrels be the dominant species. And Doreen's just like, wow, that's fucked up of evil me to say. So now I had to go and defeat her. <laughs> what is notable is that, you know, so so Alien is basically just Doreen without that ability to hold back. So mm. she, in order to enact her plan, defeats the entirety of the Marvel Universe, every single superhero and supervillain, within the course of three hours. Okay. Uh, and this is just... Her clone is the Dark same side. except for morality. And because of that morality change, she isn't worthy of Mjolnir. Those are the only differences between them. So a Doreen, speaking, by death that... battle rules, yeah. can go way more unhinged. Okay. Uh, and I have Gene a hard Arthur time seeing how it. Sandy can can stand up to somebody that canonically can be every single, every Marvel, single character. Marvel character in three hours. Okay. She defeats the core Avengers in 22 seconds. It's literally stated in the comic. I w- I She's like, 22 like... seconds, that's a new record. Because her been... previous record of defeating all the Avengers is 26 seconds. I've been going through the feat sheet for, and one of them is just, it's under computer science feats. Helps explain the difference between Apple and Android apps to a woman from the 1800s. Like, just what a good, <laughs> what a powerful most computer impressed. science feat. Yeah, that's okay. a, that's the biggest. That's a bigger genius feat than any of the shit that I have. Yeah. Um, Duplex does Duplex that include X, the Hulk. I assume that does. That, does, that yeah. does include the Hulk. She technically, it's one of the few non-violent defeats that Aline does. She, because mm. because the because Shield is like, all right, our final our final move. We're gonna send in the Hulk. And then she basically has him fall into a trap as she has one of her cutest squirrels sit in front of him. And he's like, oh my god, the squirrel's so cute. And he picks it up and it brings him out of rage and back to being Bruce Banner. At which point she just goes up and just boops him to the to the negative uh, universe because that's where she's been sending all the heroes as she defeats them. Like, it's a whole thing. Post an image <laughs> does the squirrel girl have the ability to send people into other universes? She programs teleportation. Oh, so the teleporter. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Sandy yeah. also has a teleporter that that can send you into different um, dimensions. Um, I, I, let's talk about some of Sandy's inventions, and I'll get to like the her win loss. We, we do need to start wrapping this up, so let's go ahead and do I know. that. Yeah. Uh, Sandy's got a jetpack. She's got a ray that can instantly put you to sleep. Doreen has no resistance to that. Um, an acorn submarine. Uh, tons of spaceships helicopter that she made out of like random debris on a desert island it's more of an intelligence thing she has an ai she has an analyzer that can analyze like anything about an opponent like their background their genetic composition anything tons of robots that can fight a shrinking machine a robot suit a portal machine a laser that turns you into amoebas um a molecular separator ray that can be that can fuse beings together um image one mike i just wanted to share this because it's disturbing <laughs> um it's one of the worst things I've ever seen. <laughs> she used what the main the cast hell? together. Um she what oh my god, I lost it. Not a show for she, children, actually. <laughs> she has a tree dome which can form a metal barrier and then become a spaceship. Um and to counter the army, Why are the they melting? army uh because they were like fused together into into one being with that gun. Um, Squidward was fucking with it, and it did that. That's why Sandy is also in that. Um, uh, she has the Proto Generator 2000, so which can create clones, um, which would just allow her to, over time, match um, Doreen's army of squirrels. Um, she could just camp out or have a clone camp out in the in the tree dome and just clone and then portal them out when they, yeah, eventually the army would be that size. Okay. 
Um, Eventually, the army, and, yes, uh, if Squirrel Do Girl did literally nothing to stop her from doing that. Why would... It's, it's... Well, actually, she wouldn't be able to, because the Treedome can turn into a spaceship and then fly into, like, other galaxies and stuff, and then has a portal that can send them back to Earth. Um, obviously, it's not a strategy that she's used in the show, but she has all of this stuff available to allow her to do something like that, if she wanted to. Um, and, so, if, uh, if we're giving Sandy all of her uh, inventions, like... What's different? What makes that different from uh, not giving Squirrel Girl uh, Mjolnir? Sandy invented them. They're hers. She owns them. Does she still have them, or are they one-time yeah. uses? She still has them. She never, okay. she never got rid of them. Like, like it's a cartoon, so it's not like she's like bringing up every episode. Like, here's my cloning machine. Um, but they ne she never gets rid of them. They, they're just always. You know, they're, they Sorry there. for uh, jumping into this at the wrong moment, Senator Armstrong. <laughs> Thank you for your service. <laughs> <laughs> and I also, I wasn't going to bring this up because I was like, eh, I don't know. Um, but I will just because there is like, oh, Doreen or Eileen beat the Marvel Universe image. Uh, actually, I just posted this one. All right, last image. My... We got yeah, yeah, yeah. the poll. I know, I know. Um, Squirrel Girl absolutely is not unbeatable. Um, she has been beaten before by other characters. Um, she like Her joke is that she's like, it, she's unbeatable, quote unquote. But she actually has. She was beaten by Craven um, very casually. Yeah, uh, to to the point where I really wouldn't say this is like necessarily beaten. And also, if we were gonna take points in death battle where it's like, oh well, they lost this one time, so let's throw the rest out. But there are more times. Like, I'm not trying to. I'm not suggesting that. I'm I'm suggesting that like, Squirrel Girl doesn't actually have some ability or anything that makes her unbeatable. Yeah, her power is not like she isn't like a, a how people sometimes think of Saitama, where it can't be beaten. Yeah. Um, it is at the end of the day just kind of plot armor. What I will say is that she also, you know, gets gets you know <laughs> defeated in the moment by other characters again. For Clone Ali, and it's a it's a great example of that. But in the ultimate conflict, she does come out like victorious at the end. So with Craven, yeah, totally. she also once again does come out victorious at the end through nonviolent compromise. She convinces yeah. him basically to go pursue some other target, and then she's good. Yeah, and we, we don't have time to get into this real quick, but I do think if we were to do this as an actual, actual death battle, we might actually explore the idea of, like, so she can communicate with squirrels, she yeah. can make squirrels loyal to her, she's not going to be able to mind control Sandy, but mm -hmm. if she can convince Ego to go away, could she not convince Sandy to just lose? Something to keep in mind. To commit suicide? <laughs> not even. <laughs> to like death kill battle, her, but right? to just no. put herself in an <laughs> I don't unfavorable know. position. Like... Yeah, again, this is this is something that would require a lot. We'd have to spend a whole episode on this because I feel like it would be a very complicated question. But I feel yeah. like that's something that could come up. Yeah. Um, it... All right. So I'm going to go ahead and start the poll in the chat. Uh, but let's go ahead and get to the uh, um, the community answers that you guys sent us before the show. Let's go ahead and bring up the first one. Uh, let's see, Squirrel Girls, this is from uh, Breeding. Uh, Squirrel Girl's entire stick is consistently defeating the undefeatable. The more outclassed she seems, the more likely she is to win. That could also be a reason why uh, Craven can keep up with her better than uh, Dr. Doom or Thanos, because the more powerful the opponent is, the more she's able to keep up with them, which is mind-boggling and weird, but that <laughs> is kind of consistent. All right, let's go ahead and bring up the answer for Sandy. There are weirder superpowers than yeah. that. Uh, Love Hawks says two words, Toon Force. Sandy exudes it. Anytime these two words show up in death battles, the wielder of such power is hard pressed to lose. That's true. That is completely true. And the fourth wall breaking is uh, kind of a big deal as well. All right. So let's bring up the poll from before the show, uh, the YouTube poll. First vote is going to Sandy. Wow, with 55% of the vote. Uh, yeah, I'm actually kind of surprised about that. I guess the okay. people don't know who Squirrel Girl is. They don't know no. like her. Yeah, I Which saw a weird, lot of comments that were basically this... just like, "I don't know who Squirrel Girl is, but SpongeBob's a no god." Longer... So there. I always thought she's she was no like the, the big meme. meme. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. everybody knew her. I guess yeah. that was like maybe people should. Maybe if you haven't read ago? her comics, yeah, go check it out. Ago. Yeah, because yeah. then she was just like a nanny in the comics for like forever and didn't really do anything for a while. 
I think she mm-hmm. became mainstream enough that she just became another comic book character rather than the one character yeah. that shows up every couple years or so and then like, like weird Thanos. one yeah yeah <laughs> she became mainstream <laughs> enough not enough to become like a main 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 character but enough that she's just in the background all the time yeah probably yeah <laughs> So it actually kind of backfired, baby. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, the poll is up. Get your votes in. Um, and then we will also cover uh, Captain Britain versus Uncle Sam right after that. But Sam, we need to get our votes in. Squirrel what Girl. Thinking? <laughs> Just like that, Squirrel Girl. Okay. okay. She has what is called in one of her comics, Cosmic Tear Empathy, which, whatever. But the point is... <laughs> She's able to diffuse almost any situation, including Galactus showing up and wanting to eat a planet, like yada yada. I think there is a very real world where she shows up, uses this like insane empathy to just tell Sandy, hey, just stand here really quick, something like that, and then just boom, teleport her into nothing. And then like that's that's that. I I'm yeah. thinking the same thing. I don't know how she would actually deliver the killing blow. That's the that's the trick here. Um, it would have but, to be a cutaway. <laughs> yeah, like I, I don't. But By logic what I mean, of the what I mean is, I don't know if she has the power to actually finish off Sandy, uh, given what Sandy can put up with in the SpongeBob universe. But I do. It does feel like she could outmatch her in most other ways. I don't know. This is this is definitely a matchup that's like. One of those where it's like, we need to spend like four more it's, hours on it's it. It's something I wanted to bring up is that whenever she defeats somebody, they're just knocked out. They're not dead. She's never disintegrates yeah. anybody. And Sandy, remember, there's the cosmic level empathy, but there's also Sandy being able to know the plot of the story and like narrate it in the moment. So if you want to talk about like counters to something like cosmic level empathy, like you have to talk about like the fourth wall breaking shit and the control of the plot um squirrel like, girl also narrates her own comics but does she control them i mean a lot of like she's like done in a we can't way? we can't get into it we've done she's done yeah, fourth wall breaking and has okay, defeated okay. deadpool in a way that was very fourth wall as well okay okay so. um yeah i figure i mean when we're, when we're talking about toon force for sandy like yeah squirrel girl's got a level of toon force as well <sighs> it, okay I'm i'm gonna go squirrel girl but I do feel like yeah. I'm I'm kind of teetering on the edge. Uh, like it could be it could could go either way for me. Yeah, I'm gonna go squirrel girl though. So that's two for squirrel girl, squirrel two for squirrel girl, one for sandy cheeks. Go ahead and wrap up the. Oh, okay. Uh, the I'm very surprised by this result, but you guys all voted for with 53 percent of the vote squirrel girl. Oh. <gasps> Hey. So Squirrel Girl wins. Amazing. I was not Brutal. expecting this, honestly. Brutal. Wow. Okay. Thank so <laughs> well deserved victory. Uh, nice job. Nice job. All right. But we do have one more poll to get to. If you all saw our our most recent, our previous episode of Death Battle Cast, we had to record it. Uh we had to pre-record it because we were gonna be July doing 4th. RTX stuff. It was July. Uh, July 4th, yeah. Oh yeah, National and it was July Fourth and whatnot. Um, but we had to do Uncle Sam versus Captain Britain, which was quite possibly one of the most surprisingly overpowered matchups we've ever seen. Really? It was amazing. If you have not seen that episode, don't vote on this, please. Those of you who did, it is time to decide who wins that because we decided to leave it up to the democratic vote. <laughs> All of you will decide. <laughs> Who wins the previous episode? That's right. We're doing two victories today. <laughs> um, we've got uh, uh, Squirrel Girl defeating Sandy Cheeks. Now, who wins between... Now, this is the comic book, Uncle Sam. DC Uncle Sam, who yeah. can fight, like, the Spectre and Superman. And is the combined will of America's tenacity or something like that. <laughs> and then Captain Britain, who is from Britain and part of the Britain Corps, who defends the multiverse. <laughs> Mm-hmm. apparently it has excalibur uh and used to have the power of britain controlling him but now it's something else i can't remember what it was uh both of them are obscenely powerful so who wins Captain Remind mind it is still july <laughs> <laughs> all right we're gonna let that go for a little bit um i 
Oh my gosh, that episode was so crazy though. Um, but I, I really, I really want to do that episode as an actual death battle now. Uh, yeah, Sam versus Britain. That would be great. It'd be great to do one like in exactly a year from now. Like plan it to be the July the Fourth <laughs> episode. Oh my gosh! <laughs> if we have a, a an episode, I think I actually asked this maybe last week. Like, is next July Fourth? Oh, uh, it's going to be on a Wednesday, I think, isn't it? Next That's July Fourth is on a Thursday. Thursday. That's pretty. I mean, you just do it that week, right? Ooh, November fifth is on a Tuesday next year. <clears throat> that November fifth. Oh, yeah. I have to know, but I want to shift across the pond. Um. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> let us know. Do you think we should do this next year? <laughs> That's like planning ahead, well, quite a bit, but <laughs> maybe we should. <laughs> All right, so we're going to wrap up the poll in just a few seconds. It is kind of uh, not entirely one-sided, but it doesn't look like it's going to be changing uh, anytime soon. So I'll go ahead and wrap it up. Um, and we have an official winner to last week's Death Battle cast. Uncle Sam with 66% of the vote. Congratulations. American choice. Good job. <laughs> yes, to our Holy. old American hero. Other Body options. Uh, Memorial Day is on a Monday next year. Oh, perfect. That one's not bad. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. I don't we'll even see. know how this how episode would work. I I love it. Uh, Mike I was a season it. finale. Finale quality. Here we go. I absolutely want to do it. I, I, think I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm only partially joking. Like, I legitimately kind of want to do this episode. <laughs> we'll see if we actually do it. I can't promise anything, obviously. It's way too early. All right. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to uh, another episode of Death Battle Cast. If you missed the sneak peek for Vader Obito, we will play it at the end here as we close off. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, but yeah, and that episode is going to be airing in just a few days. And if, I mean, if you're watching the, the VOD uh, on Friday, uh, literally in like two days. Very so, soon. Yeah, get ready. Yes. <laughs> um, all right. So until we see you next, be kind to others, be kind to yourself, be awesome. We'll see you next week. I sense your fear, your anger, and a power. I will be taking it. That power will save this cursed world. You'll have to pry it from my cold, dead hands. Then you will die. What? All too easy. I expected more. <laughs> I won't disappoint.